I've got no roots, but my home was never on the ground. I've got no roots, but my home was never on the ground. So I just wanted to do a quick voiceover to explain what I'm doing here because I got a lot of critique from people on Instagram about this. Um, it won't kill your horse to stand on the lead rope, but if you never teach them how to react calmly to that, it could pose a major safety issue. So I think that this is a very important part of halter training. Um, it isn't dangerous in that they can't really get tangled up in it because the rope is only attached to them. And if they're in a breakaway halter, even if they did, the halter would break. But this is something that you should always be supervising them during. And as you can see, Simon figures out how to move off the rope really fast and he doesn't panic. So this is a super useful skill because if you own a horse, it's not really a matter of if they'll ever stand on the rope or the reins. It's when it will happen. And if they get caught up in something, you want them to be able to respond calmly. So if you view something like this as too much of a safety risk for your horse, I would reevaluate what you do for riding and training because in terms of safety, this is a lot less dangerous than most things we ask of horses and it also benefits their safety in the long run. So this is just a clip of me trimming Simon's mane. I feel like using scissors is best for most horses because pulling does hurt them and especially with an already nervous horse, you really don't need to give them more of a reason to be cautious of people. So while his mane is thick, I am not going to be taking a pulling comb to it anytime soon or ever because I want him to trust me. So my method for cutting is cutting vertically because it gives a kind of not blunted off look like you would get if you're cutting horizontally so it looks more natural and it gives it a pulled look without having to pull and then when I do need to thin I use thinning shears as needed I didn't use them on him because mine are broken but that's something that you can do if you need to thin the mane more than cutting vertically allows you and if he needed to move I just let him kind of move around and do his thing because he was being so good letting me do this and I'm not going to be a dictator in getting him to stand still when he's already putting himself out there when he's nervous and unsure of things. And before any of you say anything about liking his long mane, um, he did have a very impressive mane but like 90% of that was mats. So instead of keeping it long and having a bunch of chunks missing out of it, I decided to give him a hunter haircut because he's going to need one eventually when he's showing. And this way all of the mats were able to be taken out without there being huge gaps missing from his mane. So it looks better to do it this way. and. I don't really think there would have been an easy way to untangle all of the knots he had in his mane, especially with a horse that is more nervous like him.
Hi. Oh, hi. Good boy. Hi. Oh. So traditionally for halter training, most people use a bum rope to encourage forward movement instead of just doing pressure and release on the head by pulling the halter. Since Simon is still very nervous around his hind end and was super kicky when we first got him, I knew this wouldn't be a good idea because he would rush forward and panic from it. So while I'm going to be working to get him used to stuff around his hind end, it wasn't the time to do it and halter training is such an important skill to have just for safety purposes if we ever needed to move him. So what I did, since I can't use a butt rope, is I would apply pressure to the halter and then I would encourage forward movement with a treat and then I would give him a treat and immediately release pressure if he moved any of his feet. And eventually it got him to the point where he would walk with me without needing a butt rope. So he's kind of halter broken this, he still needs some brushing up. But this is basically what I did with him and that's why I haven't been using a butt rope. I managed to walk him from his paddock to the arena and he was really really good and then I did this work in the arena with him. Okay, cutie pie. And since he was being good, I decided to start introducing the tarp to him and I got him to walk over it twice, which was really good because he was quite nervous of it. I haven't tried to touch him with it or anything because if I pick it up, he's very nervous. But walking over it is a good start and we're going to continue working on this and I'm going to get him used to being handled with a plastic bag and then eventually we will get to the point of having the tarp all the way over him. Now Simon is kind of fat, so even though he's only two, he does need some exercise to help him lose some weight. So I've been free lunging him or lunging him in the round pen to do that. And then today we also added some little ground poles and he seemed to have a lot of fun with that. Um, he's going to be doing periodic work like this. Um, over the winter just to help with his weight and he's also getting handled a lot more than my other auction rescue Roo because he needs it a lot more that mare is really 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 well adjusted and she is being turned out for the winter just to hang out because of that she doesn't require the same amount of handling at all because she's already far past the point i would expect such a young horse to be um so i'm really happy with her and that's why they're getting handled at different rates hey
Speed racer. Oh my goodness, Simon. Oh, you're such a good boy. Holy cow, Simon, you crazy?